Minecraft 1.20 is the most important update we have seen in years. I don't mean that this is necessarily going to be the biggest, most game-changing update. I mean that this is a make or break update for Mojang. Look at nearly any Minecraft video in the past year or so, and you can see how frustrated people are with the past few updates. I have certainly offered my fair share of criticism in my downfall of Mojang video. In case you didn't see it, my main point was that Mojang was falling short of the lofty expectations they set for themselves by announcing so many crazy features during Minecraft Live. In short, they have a community communication problem, not a quality problem. If you're the kind of person that only picks up Minecraft every few years, you'd return and be amazed by how much the game has improved because you'd be comparing Minecraft to what it was a few years ago. Meanwhile, the hardcore fanbase watches Minecraft Live, then compares Minecraft to the version that Mojang teased, an idealized version that doesn't exist. I guarantee you, if the past three Minecraft Lives didn't happen, even the most dedicated fans would regard 1.17 through 1.19 as some of the best updates we have ever seen. Seeing Mojang struggle like they have in the past few years brings me no joy. In case you haven't noticed, my whole YouTube channel revolves around Minecraft, so I want to see Mojang succeed. Which is why what I'm about to show you is the most important part of Minecraft Live, way more important than any feature announced so far. First, I would actually love to take some time to talk about what we have learned from previous years, because we have announced some features that we didn't manage to deliver. And it's important that we learn from that and that we take action from that. So, for example, this year we will only show features that have come very, very far in the development process. Yeah, and I mean, it feels like we would tell everything at Minecraft Live and then you had to just keep up with that. You, you couldn't add anything or kind of change things. No, yes. Finally, I'm confident that they understand the problem and that we are about to witness Mojang's redemption arc. It might not seem like it now given how little was actually announced, but I think we are standing on the precipice of a Minecraft golden age. That's a bold statement, so let me explain. We are witnessing Mojang getting back to basics. They're sitting down and really thinking about what made them successful in the past, and I'd argue that the biggest thing that separates Mojang from other game development studios and what made Minecraft great in the first place is the tight feedback loop between the developers and the community. Seriously, I challenge you to name one other game franchise where the community has nearly as much input as we have. Looking at this Wikipedia list of the best-selling game franchises of all time, nearly every single one is developed and released with almost no community input. I think the root of the Minecraft community's frustration is that they don't feel listened to anymore. Think about Fireflies. They were cancelled for reasons that most players thought were silly. And think about how Mojang went ahead and added a new controversial chat reporting system that most people didn't want. Mojang stood firm in these unpopular decisions despite the outcry of the community. After all this, it is very encouraging to see the importance of the community reaffirmed during Minecraft Live while Agnes was talking about the next update. So for now, we will call it the 120 update and it will be released in 2023. Uh, and the reason for that is that we want to shape it like throughout the development process together with the community because like Minecraft is, is some kind of like magic almost to Minecraft. And I think one of the key things that creates this magic is that Minecraft is community fueled. We do know what we want to achieve with the update and we have a vision. We just want to be like flexible enough so the community can be part uh, of shaping it. It sounds like we're going to have more input over what's being added than ever before, which is really exciting. And rather than making a bunch of huge announcements, Mojang seems to be playing their cards closer to their chest now, only showing features that are imminent ready for playtesting. During Minecraft Live 2022, they announced hanging signs, a bamboo wood type, a bamboo raft, chiseled bookshelves, and camels. When I said they were only showing features imminently ready for playtesting, I meant it. Look at me, I'm on a bamboo raft, and now I'm on a camel. I'm recording this not even a week after Minecraft Live, and we can already play with all the announced features. After so many themed updates, we are pretty used to having a concrete theme, so naturally not naming the update was met with mixed reactions. But here's a hot take. Is not having a theme nailed down from the beginning really a bad thing? I mean, think about it. When Mojang bases the update theme around a single biome or dimension, it makes that one part of the game fresh and exciting again, but the rest of the game is the same. I think interspersing new features throughout the entire game 
might actually be a good thing for the longevity of Minecraft, which as we can see here, we want to keep update Minecraft for like a lifetime for 50 years or more, is something Mojang is thinking about. Not gonna lie, the past few years were bumpy, but now I think Mojang is on the right track and we really need to give them a chance here. Reading the comments from the Minecraft Live 2022 stream, there were some players that were disappointed with how little Mojang actually showed, but you can't make everyone happy. When you're playing the long game, you need to be strategic. People expect announcements from AAA game studios backed by trillion dollar companies made on stage during the biggest event of the year to be airtight commitments. If you want your game to survive for 50 years, you need to be liked by your community and a big part of that is managing expectations. I'm sure you've heard the phrase under promise and over deliver. It seems like that's the approach Mojang is taking now which is smart. You can't be let down if you don't have any expectations. Of course, the unfortunate side effect is that Mojang is going to be sharing less details about what they're planning on updating, which means less information shared at Minecraft Live. Some people are grumbling about this, but that'll blow over quickly, and I guarantee that most people will forget about that long before Mojang releases Minecraft 1.20. I'm sure that's exactly what they're thinking. Minecraft 1.19 left a sour taste in people's mouth, not because of the update quality. The update was awesome. It gave us the deep dark and ancient cities, and a whole bunch of other great features. Sadly, Mojang's string of unpopular decisions so close to Minecraft 1.19's release overshadowed what was otherwise an amazing update. It looks like the strategy is having a somewhat underwhelming Minecraft Live, weathering the small amount of negativity that comes from that, and then hopefully having a non-controversial 1.20 release and possibly even surprising players with additional features. I know that players have been frustrated, but I really think they've learned from their mistakes. Also, I haven't seen anyone comment on this, but I think their frustration cuts both ways. I mean, just look at this animation at the very end of Minecraft Live. The sign says Minecraft Live was awesome, and that, that frog is staring daggers at a disappointed looking Steve. I feel like this is Mojang saying, we gave you what you wanted, so like us again. Mojang gets a ton of hate. A lot of it I think is unfair. I see people comment all the time comparing Mojang to mod developers or even people like me that add a bunch of crazy things to the game in a short amount of time. Mojang needs to think about performance impacts, how features fit into the Minecraft ecosystem, and not to mention all the subcultures within Minecraft that need to be catered to. For example, what if Mojang makes a change to benefit survival players and it completely destroys PvP in the process? Mod developers don't need to think about that because their features only affect the people that go out of their way to download that content. Meanwhile, Mojang's updates affect everyone, and Mojang needs to think about updating multiple versions of the game and worry about supporting a bunch of different device types. I know my shtick is making data packs, but I also work as a full-time Java developer. I've got a foot in both worlds, and I can assure you that Mojang isn't being lazy. Developing Minecraft is a tremendous technical challenge. There's super impressive community content out there, don't get me wrong, but comparing that to an official Minecraft update is comparing apples to oranges in my opinion. I just wanted to toss it out there because I, I don't want my channel to become a repository for Mojang hatred. These people make our favorite game and while constructive criticism is necessary, extending a thank you to Mojang every now and then is equally as important. Minecraft has certainly made my life better and I'm sure most of you feel the same way. Anyway, if you're new to this channel, you're probably utterly confused as to what's been happening in the background. My passion is adding content to Minecraft. I coded everything you've been watching. I made the dungeon, the drill, all those ridiculous items. If that sounds cool to you, then consider subscribing. My name is Whimsy. Thank you for watching. He's a magical blacksmith from lands unknown. He's your favorite data packet ice cream cone. You might ask yourself, who is he? It's Whimsy!